Let's receive right now our fresh daily bread from our Heavenly Father. Father, we love you. We are just so grateful, Father, that you chose us to be your children and that you are our good, good Father. Father, I thank you right now that you give us exactly what you would have us to hear today. We believe we receive right now our fresh manna from heaven, the living word of God, which is our spiritual food. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that because we've gotten strife out of our life, Father, that we can receive the meat of the word of God. And Father, I thank you that your spirit is upon me because you have anointed me to minister this truth. And Father, that I speak as the oracles of the living God, that you have given me commandment what I should speak and what I should say. Father, I thank you that you speak through my lips. And Father, thank you for every person who is listening. Father, that you have drawn by your spirit to um, hear this word, they hear the truth. Thank you, Father, that you give each one of them a focused, undistracted mind and heart, Father, in Jesus' name, that they are purposeful in hearing and receiving the Word of God. Thank you, Father. We just thank you for this fresh manna today. And now let's acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over my family. Jesus is Lord over my life. Jesus is Lord over my nation. And Jesus is Lord over the nations of the earth. From the top to the bottom and all the way around the middle, we declare He is Lord. He is pouring out His Spirit upon all flesh. And He is working. <clears throat> and no man can turn it back. We are in right now an unprecedented move of God of the Spirit and the Word in Jesus' name. This is just a little side trip, but you know, in the past there have been some mighty moves of God, so grateful, grateful, like the Great Awakening and uh, even the Charismatic Renewal, which I am so grateful, so grateful that I was a part of that. But you know, it wasn't, <clears throat> it wasn't something that I or Frank, um, <clears throat> excuse me it wasn't something that we really had anything to do with the Lord just drew us and and guided our steps and I'm so grateful to him for that and when we would start to get off he would bring us back to the word thank you father well we are in right now like I said an unprecedented move of God and this move is not just the Spirit and not just the Word. This move of God is bringing the two together, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Praise God. And we are a part of that. Isn't that awesome? The Holy Spirit has been teaching us how to have effective, productive prayers where we pray, expect results, and we get results. I have to share a quick testimony with you. I had to get, uh, I had to take a picture, the one that's hanging on my mantle. It didn't have a wire on it. And so I took it to a place to just get the wire on the back. And as we were standing there, she said, well, I can't do it that way. I have to, we have regulations on how we have to do this. And so the way she was talking, it wasn't going to work. And I just stood there and I said, Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we have the wisdom of God and we know what to do. And do you know, in just a few minutes time, the Lord showed us exactly what to do. I brought it home and I said, now, Lord, you help me hang this. And... He showed me exactly how to hang it, and it was perfect. You know, he wants us 
to allow him to be a part of every detail of our life and to make our way perfect and to perfect everything that concerns us. So knowing the heart of the Father is a very important part of getting your prayers answered so that Satan can't lie to you and tell you, oh, you know, that's just too little for him to bother about. That's not what God says. That's a lie from the enemy. God, your Father, says, let me take care of this for you. Let me handle this. I can do this, and I'll do it right, and it'll be easy. So don't shy away from going to your Father. Allow Him to help you in everything, things that you're accustomed to doing on yourself, by yourself, even when you cook. Father, I thank you that you're helping me. Uh, man, when you're at work, Father, I thank you that you're helping me and prospering me. Praise God. So he has been teaching us, the Holy Spirit, who has been sent to teach us all things, is teaching us prayer so that our prayers will be effective, so that we receive what we pray for and we receive it right away. So let's go to Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things soever you desire. That's the first part. When you pray. That's the second part. Believe you receive them. That's the third part. And you shall have them. That's the next part. And then we go to the next verse that says, And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, drop it, leave it, let it go that your Father, which is in heaven, may also forgive you your trespasses and drop them and leave them and let them go. So for the last three days, the Holy Spirit has been ministering to us on being free from strife and anger. And um, isn't it good? Isn't it good to be delivered from anger, to be delivered from strife? You know, until you see the truth of the Word of God, then people just think that this is just a normal part of life. And no, it is not. Not for a believer. You have been redeemed from that. You have been delivered from that through Jesus Christ. He took your anger. He took your um, strife on the cross. And now as you acknowledge that, Father, I thank you that I am delivered from anger and I am full of your love and your joy and your peace. Praise God. So today, we're going to go, the Holy Spirit is leading us to go to, um, not just to forgive, but our Father's instructions on how to actually treat our enemies and respond to our enemies. So let me read this out of, well, let me read this first in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 24. Follow peace, and that means pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest anyone fail of the grace of God lest any, let's see, here it is, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. So he's saying that we are to pursue peace with all people. It doesn't matter who they are, whether it's your bosses, your coworkers, uh, people at church, you pursue peace with all people. And then he said, lest a root of bitterness springing up trouble not only you, but defile many. And the world is full of people with bitterness. But you know, that's not something that we can afford to have. And that's something that the Lord frees, of, uh, frees us of, is roots of bitterness in one place. And we'll probably look at this tomorrow, but in one place he says, uh, we let all bitterness, all anger, all wrath, all clamor, 
all evil speaking be put away from us with all malice. And it's all done by faith. It's not that you have to do it in the power of your flesh. It's all done by the Spirit of God and the Word of God that has created the faith in you. And then, listen to this. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So, with that in mind, let's look at what he says in Luke chapter 6. And this, if you will allow the, the Holy Spirit to minister this to you, it will formulate in your mind exactly how to respond to people that may be enemies, even within a family, that may be, um, may be acting as enemies or just other people that may be acting as enemies against you. But listen to this. He said, For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. But if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have you? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies. Love your enemies. He doesn't say tolerate them. He says love them and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, do men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you measure, it shall be measured to you again. And then I'm going to read also out of Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 48. And this is Matthew's, uh, what he wrote. And, and I'm sure it's the same uh, time frame, the same message that Jesus was teaching. You have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But, but, these are Jesus' words. I say unto you, love your enemies. And let me stop there because the word tells us to love one another as Christ loves the church. He tells us, um, and, you, and you know, people say, well, I just can't love everybody. Who, who am I to love? Well, first of all, we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, with all of our soul, and with all of our mind. Oh my, for all that he has done for us. We just love him. And we love him because he first loved us. And then the word tells husbands, love your wives. And wives, it tells you in Titus to love your husbands, to love your children. There's a place that says, love the brethren. And, you know, maybe some husbands and wives, well, I just can't, I just can't love them as a spouse. Then the word says, love your enemies. So there's no out on this. And we don't want an out. We, because God's ways are always higher. And God's ways always produce great things as we hear it and as we do it, as we do the word of God. And these were not, you know, if you want to do this. No, he says, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do what? Do what? 
Yes, bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he makes the sun to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love them which love you, what reward have you? Do not even the publicans the same? And if you salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans the, do so? Be ye therefore perfect or mature, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. So this is something that you can write down that I have just um, planted in my mind and heart and made a decision on is that when someone appears to be an enemy or um, persecutes or says something against, the first thing is love them. The second thing I put in my mind is be concerned for them. Not that you take the care of it, but with compassion, be concerned for them and their well-being. And then the word says pray for them. You know, pray for their salvation. That's a good thing to pray for our politicians, right? Hey, let's go over there in Timothy. He says, first of all, making supplications, intercessions, prayers, and giving of thanks for those, for all men and those that are in authority over us, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life. And then he says, for God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to the knowledge of the truth. So praying for their salvation will open the door for God to send laborers to their paths because God loves them and he wants them saved as well. So you love, you um, are concerned for, you pray for, you forgive. Because you love, you forgive them. And then you bless. And you don't, you know, sometimes you can't do this like right to the person. There's been people in my life that the Lord would say no, because if you say something to them, then they're going to take it wrong. So you just bless them in the spirit by faith and pray for them and um, speak good things over them by faith in the spirit and surround them with love in the spirit. And then that opens the door for God to come in and do a mighty work. I've shared with you several times about how that happened with my brother and how because of that, God just opened the door to for him to come in and be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit and be just, um, just a great, mighty man of God and lead his family in righteousness Praise God. God's ways are higher than our ways. And God's ways always, always work. I read not too long ago a testimony by Kate McVeigh in a book that I encourage you all to get. And it's called Blessing, no, Favor, A Blessing of God. And she, at one time, was voted the most likely to not succeed and which just devastated her well the lord heard her cry she just cried out to the lord and she after that she got born again and filled with the spirit and then got a hold of the word of god well there were, and then started witnessing at um her school and um she moved from the class of, uh, let's see, they were slow learners, but she moved from that class. She, she graduated with a regular class because of the Word of God and became 
one of the stars on the basketball team. But as in this learning the word of God of what God was telling her, there was a person, a, a girl at school that just did not like Kate and was always just making trouble for her. And her mother kept telling her and she would put uh, notes on her mirror and she would say, forgive, forgive, forgive. And so she did. She And she said, she, of course her flesh wanted to do opposite, but she chose to go God's way. That's the highway. God's way is the highway. And so she started praying for her, for God to bless her, and just started and forgave her. Every time something, this girl would do something to her, she would forgive her, and she would just pray for her, for God to bless her. Well, one day, this girl showed up on her doorstep, and she came in, and she said, I was in the neighborhood, and I wanted to stop by. She said, because... You have changed so much, and I want to know what happened. Well, the girl ended up getting born again, getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, and she had a problem, I think it was, with her knee, and God healed her knee. So when you do it God's way, then you get God's results. And this is his higher way. And so I encourage you to plant these scriptures. That's Luke chapter 6. Oops, dropped my notes. Excuse me. And Matthew chapter 5 to go to these because it's the power of the word in you as you uh, hide that word in your heart and allow that word to become flesh in you. You can't just do this on your own. It takes the power of the Word and the Spirit in you to do it so that it's genuine, so that it's coming from your heart and it's coming from the Spirit of God as you act on the Word of God. And you know, I remind you that the Word says that he that hears the Word and does the Word is like a man that digs deep and builds his house upon the rock. And when the storms come and beat vehemently upon that house, it cannot shake it. So don't take these um, instructions, this truth, as, okay, if I do, okay, if I don't, no. Anytime you see something in the Word, make the decision that this is for me and this is what I will do in every situation. So when you stand praying for gift, if you have anything against anyone. And you know, this isn't a one-time thing because there can be people that just, whether it's at the grocery store or people on the road or whatever, you are a person of peace. And if somebody cuts you off, then you just bless them. Father, I just bless their day. I love them. I believe they get there safely and that they have a great day. Do you know what happens? When you bless somebody else, guess what? That blessing comes on you. Because whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Also, uh, this he says, that, and whatever you would that any man do to you, do you even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Well, I prefer that if I unintentionally offend somebody, that they just pray for me that they love me, they forgive me, and they pray for me. And so if you sow that, then, and especially, like I said yesterday, two of the major uh, areas for you to operate in this love and forgiveness is with your spouse, with your children, within your whole family, which includes parents and siblings and so forth, but it's especially with the spouse and then with the children, and then at church. And allow this word to become flesh in you and that this is your response to people. Remember all day, Jesus is Lord. Thank God for this word. And thank God this word 
is becoming flesh in us and producing mightily in us and prevailing in Jesus' name.